Welcome back to Saving Throw. We're in the middle of combat right now, so there's no time for introductions to battle. As our helpful underpaid stuntmen gather their wits, we'll talk about some combat action. There are six types, standard, move, full round, swift, immediate, and free. They're explained on page 181 of the core rulebook. Every character can take one standard action and one move action per round. If so desired, they can opt to swap their standard action for an additional move action, but they cannot swap a move action for another standard action. You can only have one standard action per round, capiche? Also, once per turn, your character can take a free five foot step. Time out. I'm totally confused. Can I get an example? Sure. So right now, Amy's fighter is getting up off the ground. Standing from prone is a move action. A move action is moving, or any similar action such as opening a door, picking up an item, or drawing a weapon. Exactly. The table with the examples of actions are on page 183 of the rulebook. So now that Amy's guy has used a move action, he can either take a standard action, or he could take another move action. A standard action is a time-consuming action that generally doesn't involve too much moving, such as attacking an opponent, casting a spell, or drinking a potion. So, Amy, this is your call. What are you going to do? Well, my guy dropped his sword when Dom put him to sleep. Uh, I'll use a second move action to pick up the sword. Great. Ben, you're up. What would you like to do? I stand up, too. Okay, but Amy's going to get that attack of opportunity when you do that. Bullcrap, why? Uh, if you look at that chart, you'll see a column that says attack of opportunity. That means if you are next to someone and you take an action that says yes in that column, anyone standing near you gets to take a free attack. But one person can only take a single attack of opportunity per round. It is explained on page 180 of the rulebook. Oh, I can't just lie here. I'll take the risk, I guess. I, I stand. All right. Amy, roll it. Mm, 14. That hits. Roll damage. Uh, six. Your powerful blow digs deep into Ben's shoulder, drawing a spurt of arterial blood. Ben, you're down another two hit points. Bastard, I attack! You don't have a sword. So, okay, uh, so I get it. Okay, you can take a five-foot step, which gets you close enough to your sword. And picking up your sword will be your second move action. Normally, both stepping away from an opponent and picking up a weapon would provoke more attacks of opportunity, but I already took an attack of opportunity this round, so I don't get another one. Fine, whatever. I grab my sword. Amy? I'm going to take my five-foot step. Then I'm going to disarm him. What? Really? Okay, sure. What does that mean? So Amy is going to take her standard action to attempt a combat maneuver. It's covered on page 198 of the core rule. Combat maneuvers are handled a little differently than regular attacks. The first difference is that they generally do no damage, but they have special effects such as breaking a weapon, tripping an opponent, or disarming an opponent. So another important distinction is that attack rolls include your strength bonus. Stronger guys are better at combat maneuvers. And the target doesn't use an armor class. They use combat maneuver defense, or CMD. This is 10 plus your strength and dexterity. Armor quality doesn't matter during a combat maneuver. So that means if you come across somebody wearing big heavy plate mail and you can't seem to hit them, it might be your best opportunity to strike him using combat maneuvers since it doesn't help them in that kind of attack. Like how Braun defeated Servardus Egan. Make the bad man fly. But the good news is, is that there's a minus four penalty to hit with the disarm maneuver. So your character has 10 CMD because you don't have any modifiers to strength or dexterity. That means that she'll need a 14 to succeed. Plus, the disarm maneuver provokes an attack of opportunity. It does? Sweet! Taste the thunder, Vorpal! Feel my wrath! What? Why? Oh, what is wrong with these goddamn dice? Okay, Amy. Roll your stupid dumb attack. Okay, at minus four, Amy needs a 14 to hit. 16. Of course, perfect, awesome. All right, Ben, it's your turn. Are you going to try to get your sword again? No, screw this, I run away. Really? <laughs> no, I guess it would be a free action. So I can do it whenever I want? Within reason, each round is six seconds long, so you can fit as many free actions as you can in six seconds. Uh, examples of free actions are listed on the table, though urinating isn't on the list. 
whatever. I pee my pants and I run. Uh, I also scream in fear because that's a free action too, right? As long as it only is six seconds of screaming. Yes, but instead of running, you can actually use a full round action to withdraw from combat. Full round action? Uh, like an action that takes a full round, replacing the move and standard action. It's things like lighting a torch or loading your crossbow or withdrawing from a fight. Good, I do that. Screw this fight. Okay, you move double your movement speed. You are now 60 feet away. Amy, are you going to chase him? Uh, no. I take out my longbow and I shoot him. Wait a goddamn minute, when did we get bows? I don't know, but I'll allow it. <laughs> Seriously? Whose side are you on? I am the GM, Ben. I am totally neutral, but in all honesty, I'm rooting for Amy. Amy rolled a hit. Nice. Okay, you miss. Ben. I keep running. I run and pee and scream and run for six seconds. Okay, you can move up to four times your movement speed if you take a full action to run. Whatever, I do it. So 120 plus 60 is buck 80. All right, you're 180 feet away now. Amy? I shoot again. Your longbow has a range of 100 feet, so you'll be taking a minus two penalty for every full range increment after that. That means that uh, 180 feet, you're gonna take a minus two penalty to hit. That's it? Just minus two? Yep. Why don't you look up the Battle of Creasy and talk to me about the effective range of longbows, okay? Fine. Ugh. Can I take a free action of crapping my pants? No and gross. That'll have to wait until your next turn, if you even live that long. Amy, you've gotta roll a 12 or better. 13. 13 minus 2 is 11. That still hits an armor class 10. Roll damage. The longbow is D8. 2. Oh, awesome. I'm at zero hit points now. Am I dead? Nope. Just disabled. Uh, excuse me, sir. The correct term is developmentally disabled. Thank you. No, Ben. Just no. Just disabled. Like how a car is disabled if you pop its tires. Your character has popped tires right now. You can still drive around, but you really can't do anything without inflicting more damage. It's covered on page 189 of the rulebook. Basically, you can either do a move action or a standard action per round. You can take a move action without inflicting damage, but if you take a standard action, you lose one hit point and you lose consciousness. So unless you have a class or racial ability that negates that penalty, but you don't have any of those things. Great. Are there any trees to hide behind? You're in luck. There's a small tree about 25 feet away. I hide behind the tree. Awesome. The tree gives you cover, which means that you'll get a plus four to your armor class. Cover is, um, covered on page 195 of the rule book. Okay, I hide behind the tree and use a free action to vomit blood. Awesome. Amy. I attack. All right, he's over 200 feet away. So that's minus four, plus he's in cover, which means another minus four. You're gonna need an 18 or better to hit. Father, I call upon your spirit and the spirits of our ancestors Guide to Guide my arrow. This cowardly creature has soiled our family name and soiled his family pants. I pray to you now. Let my arrow fly straight and true. Mwah. Oh, 18! Damage. Does it even matter? Five. Okay, Ben. You're at negative five hit points. So now I'm dead, right? Not yet. You're dying. But you're not dead yet. Basically, you'll bleed out unless you're extraordinarily lucky or someone comes to your aid. Looks like you're screwed. Most likely your fighter will die nameless and weaponless beneath a tree, caked in urine, vomit, and feces. A truly pathetic ending for a truly cowardly creature. <laughs> okay, now you've made me sad. Time to do a pity deus ex machina. Through your dimming vision, you catch sight of a merchant wandering around in a confused state. Ben, what do you do? I bleed and moan. Maybe I cry a little? Okay. He notices you and approaches. <gasps> well, and that does it for the tutorial. Hopefully we've given you a good base of knowledge that gives you the confidence to find or start a game of your own. We'll release videos of our gaming sessions. Those videos will include pop-ups explaining the rules as we play. 
That way, if you're still unfamiliar with the game and the mechanics, this will give you another avenue to learn. It's gonna be fun, I promise. If you liked what you saw in this video, like, comment, and subscribe! If you didn't like what you saw, that's fine! Thanks for watching anyway! So every season we plan to tackle a different RPG. So let us know in the comments below which RPG you'd like us to cover next season. But until then, thanks for watching. We're Saving Throw and... Let's Dungeon! Dungeon!